So let's imagine we've started up a new company. Um, most services now actually depend on the internet. So the first thing we need is an internet connection. So there's my internet connection. Okay. We also need a router from our, our service provider. So here's our router. And we then need to buy a firewall. So there's our firewall. It's our typical office deployment. But that's no good without any services. So, so let's have a look. We've got a domain server. We've got email. And we've also got web proxy. Okay. Then we've got our phone system. And if you've set up more than one branch, obviously you've got to replicate that. Okay. So we've got our phone system, which then connects to British Telecom over here. Connects to British Telecom. That's your typical business setup. Now, that's been okay. We've had some revolution lately. We've reduced the number of um, physical appliances that we need to deploy by using virtualization. But all you're doing is replacing physical machines with virtual ones. They still need maintenance, they still need support, they still need patching, they still need people trained on how to manage it. Now, overall, that could prove quite costly, especially if you've got to replicate this whole system again over another branch. There is another way. It's been around for the past 12, 14 years, and it's been used in Europe. No one's ever heard of it. But I found it. I found it in 2009 at a CBIT show. And I literally walked past the stand, and I saw something that caught my eye, and I've been playing with this for quite some time now. And now I think it's ready. I think we should get the benefit in Britain for IP Brick. So I'm about to show you now how IP Brick does all this differently. Are you excited? I am. So let's start again. We're going to start our deployment again of our new branch office. So again, we start with our internet connection. If I can find my visual aid, here it is. Here's our internet connection. We'll still need our router, typically, ADSL, LESLINE, so forth. Here's our router. IP break. There's our IP brick appliance. I don't know if you can ever see it there. Okay. So typically, there's our IP brick appliance. Jason, haven't you forgotten something? No. I haven't forgotten anything. That's all you need. <laughs> Isn't that mad? We've got rid of all those servers. And we just need one of them. That one device, okay, that one device does the following. Firewall. Phone system. VPN email including antivirus and anti spam SIP proxy the main services web proxy print server layer 3 routing
if I get out of your way. I don't know if you can read my scrawl. That's what's so different about IP Brick. Now, you might say, oh Jason, I don't really want to put all those services on one box. Well, you're right. No one would do that. You don't put all services on one box. So guess what? Buy another one. And cluster them. But what's fantastic about this is not can you buy off the shelf appliances with the ability to terminate SIP trunks and they don't charge you to terminate SIP trunks. Your what your SIP provider will, but you don't have to pay any SIP licenses on IP brick. You don't pay any voicemail licenses, you don't pay any per seat licensing. You only license the server and there's a HA license. If you buy the HA to cluster them, that is a license. But that's it. The actual devices are licensed. It allows you to grow and scale accordingly as you want. You can take an ordinary server, such as a HP server, a Dell server, I recommend some you know some decent equipment, not something you just built out of Maplins or something, you know. Not that I've got anything against Maplins, I spent a lot of money there. You can then put another server in your infrastructure that has the same features as this but running on x86 servers. And again you pay for the software, it comes on the CD and you put it on your server. Or you can even put it on a hypervisor such as Zen or VMware, you can run a VM. I've got customers that run virtual IP bricks. Um, there's one missing component I forgot to put on there. The BT network. These IP brick appliances you select what telephony cards you need. If you're using any telephony, whether it's ISDN, PSDN, analog, you buy what cards you want, FXO, FXS, that could me talking like an expert, you know, networking guy and those tiny division multiplex, yes? Anyway, um, you can buy what cards you need and you can terminate them to the PSDN. So then you can route calls wherever you need them to be. SIP, VPN, fantastic. Okay? There's one more little trick up this sleeve. Say for instance, someone says to you, oh Jason, Jason, there's a new branch opening down in Portsmouth. Just configure an IP brick. Again, all you need is another router and another IP brick. there's your branch configured because you've got all these services so you can sit here as a user and you've got an office in a box practically auto provision phones send down phones with the MAC address put them in there all you got to do is plug the phones in the phones will register to the IP brick because it's got built-in VPN you can now set up I need a different colour for this. Where's my other pen? It's in my back pocket. You can set up site to site VPNs across the internet to the other IP brick while servicing mobile VPNs. There's a guy sitting there on his laptop. You can see he was never going to be an architect. My dad was very disappointed when I chose computers. But you can see why. I can't draw to save my life. Mobile VPN. They don't charge you for SSL licenses. It's all built in.